I don't know what that thing down there in the bottom is. <laughs> Try to ignore you, that. We could probably <laughs> maybe get it to go away, or we could try and do one more. That's all right. Okay, uh, so we have Rick McEwen. Uh, he's a resident of Alawa County and has been nearly 40 years of experience in photography and the arts. Rick received a BFA in painting and printmaking from San Francisco Art Institute. Thank you. And an MFA in creative arts inter interdisciplinary from San Francisco State University. Uh, Rick has worked as a freelance graphic artist, owned and operated Visual Dialogues, a nationally acclaimed screen printing company with 11 employees, and has exhibited photographic work throughout the Western United States. Rick has 20 years professional experience in art education. Uh, Rick traveled to many foreign destinations and has backpacked extensively to the High Sierra. From 2005 to 2015, he traveled through Oregon, capturing images of nature for the Nature Conservancy of Oregon. Rick's photographs have been featured in the Nature Conservancy magazine, the Conservancy's website, fundraising presentation, Conservancy uh, brochures and newsletters, nature ads, and many other publications. His photographs have been instrumental in raising millions of dollars for the protection of environmentally sensitive habitats. In March of 2010, Rick received the National Conservancy Ray C. Davis Volunteer of the Year Award for his photography and conservation. He was a founding member of Wallowology Natural History Discovery Center in 2013, when he also began a three-year project of photographing the last remaining Wallow County Herony. His Herony photographs sparked interest of the Nez Pierce Tribe Department of Fisheries to conduct an extensive historic fish survey at the Herony in 2020. Rick has given several presentations for Wallowology and created exhibits for the Great Blue Herons and Raptors. Rick has also been a conservation photography contributor to the Wallow Land Trust since its founding in 2004. Okay, let's give Rick a hand. <laughs> okay, so You've already received uh, some information about the area, a um, little history, a little culture, um, and now I'm going to talk about um, capturing a sense of place, um, which is more about my creative process. Um, this image, I could probably recognize it. That building's not there anymore. It's been swept off into the cosmos. and. Um, <laughs> I went out there um, to photograph, this is on the Zoom all, um, about uh, midnight, and I was there for about three hours, and um, just kind of hanging out. I had a flashlight. I don't like flashes. I like either natural light or using a, a flashlight or some source. Um, and uh, as I was photographing, I turned off my flashlight, and I, I just sat there on the ground for a while, and quite a while. And then all of a sudden I felt like I'm being watched. Oh. And then I realized, you know, here I am way out here and there's nothing around and I know that there are mountain lions in this area. And so I got out my flashlight, turned around, shining it, and there was a herd of about, ooh, 40 or 50 elk, about, oh. about 25 feet uh, maybe a little farther from me. And they were all busy munching away. They didn't pay any attention to me. So um, I continued. I took a few more pictures. And when I ramped it up, they were gone. And I came on home. <laughs> so that's part of my process is I, I like to um, spend time in an area. Then, uh, let's see. The story that I'd like to share with you is when I was working on my master's thesis, I, I ran into a, a block, and I just couldn't get any farther with it. And so I decided I'm going to go for a hike. And um, um, there's a favorite place that I like to hike in. It's called Point Reyes National Seashore. And um, favorite trail is called the Meadow Trail. Unfortunately, now it's been burned, and so it's not such a favorite. But um, I, uh, I hiked up the trail. Uh, no camera, I wasn't out to work just to kind of think about things. And I settled down on this meadow, and I was lying there 
well, for about an hour, maybe, um, just looking out over the scene. And the meadows surrounded on either side by um, old trees and lichen that's hanging, real mysterious. Um, and so I was just enjoying that. And all of a sudden, I decided, well, I'm going to get up and leave. And so I rolled over, facing up from where I was. And whoop. And this distance right here, I was staring into the eyes of a bobcat. <laughs> and I watched as the hair went bristled down its back, and I could see the colors of its eyes and every hair um, and the jowls. And I just, I don't know how much time went by that we just stare, stared into each other's eyes. And then finally he just kind of slowly backed up and turned around and started off, and as I stood up and I watched, watched him go off into the trees, then I turned to leave, and there was a doe and a fawn oh. just down a little ways from where I was. And so yeah. I, I interrupted his meal. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've had people say to me when I've told them this story, they go, well, did you get a picture? And I go, no. First of all, if I had reached for my camera, which I didn't have with me, I probably would have had my face ripped off. <laughs> so, but it was the experience, um, and I've never forgotten it. And it, it, it taught me how to really be in the moment and, and be there in that place. It also gave me the, the ending of my thesis. <laughs> so this is not a bobcat, <laughs> but I did get a good portrait of um, this, I, I was set up with my camera about oh, 150, 200 feet away. Um, it's important not to disturb the wildlife. If they, if they see you and, and know you're there, you've um, disturbed them. They're, they're not then doing their natural behavior. So I always get myself um, pretty far back. And, and um, You just set up the camera. I set up the camera. And a lot of times, this is something that's really good to have, even if you're painting, is a binocular. And I like to mount them on a tripod so they're hands free. You can look through them um, and study whatever it is that you're looking at. Um, so I had a, a 500 millimeter lens. And I, I think I had a doubler on this, so took it up to 1,000. And uh, so I took pictures of the family as they were playing. And I must have been there, um, I think it was about <laughs> four in the afternoon to about uh, seven or eight. And I just watched them. There's something special that happens when you stay in a place for quite a while. And, and um, either you're looking at the landscape, you're looking at things up close, or you're watching the wildlife. <laughs> then there are times, like for this picture, I have to just step out my front door. Yeah, looked out across. This is a golf course, um, and it was just I ran back in, got my camera, and took the picture. And it lasted for a little while before the sun went behind the um, clouds. Sometimes pictures just happen. Um, you don't have to spend hours. Or with this one, we were driving back from, can I have, I could drink water. <laughs> um, we were driving back from uh, Zumwalt, and um, I saw this heron flying. Thank you. So I jumped out of the car, and I had um, uh, a zoom lens. And I started shooting as it was flying along. And then I, I got the image that I wanted. So sometimes things happen right away. Sometimes you have to kind of go with them. So this is out on the zoom wall. And I, I was spending quite a few hours out there walking around and taking a picture 
And there it was, looking at the, waiting for the clouds. Atmospherics are really important for me. Um, and I, I love the patterns that they form. And sometimes I look for reflect, like a reflection so that the, the patterns in the scenery are, um, they go and flow with the, the clouds. So while I was taking this picture there behind my tripod, all of a sudden I hear this noise <laughs> coming up behind me. And I go, oh, what's that? And I turn around. Oh. <laughs> As they all line up, <laughs> perfect composition with the white one. You know? Couldn't ask for anything better. <laughs> so again, things. You know, sometimes you just have to be in the moment there, and things happen. This picture, picture, of a dear friend of mine, we used to climb together. And he, he, when he'd come to the very top, he always had this great smile on his face. And um, this, this particular scene, we were top roping. But there was a time we were on a climb, and I was leading. And, I, and I, all of a sudden, I, re, I like to put protection uh, as high up as I can reach, <laughs> um, in about 10 feet apart, because every time you get, if you get 10 feet up and you fall, you have 10 feet of the yeah. rope to go down, so that's 20 feet. So I all of a sudden realized I was out of my ability. I had climbed into a spot that I, I didn't know how I was going to get out of. And there's a, something that climbers call sewing machine leg. When you're hanging <laughs> on long enough, you, know, <laughs> you start getting nervous and your muscles start fatiguing. So there I was. I was uh, 15 feet above my last protection. So that's 30 feet plus the stretch of the rope. Try not to think about that. <laughs> <laughs> and so I had, to, I had to move on because uh, if I stayed, I was going to fall. There was no doubt about it. If I went on, I might not fall. <laughs> so that, that's had better odds for me. So I started moving on. But, but first, I had to get rid of the fear I had to be completely there, and, and what I remember people used to talk about, one with the rock. Yeah. You know, you're just fully there in the moment, climbing. And I was able to move on, and I got to a place uh, probably 20 feet above my last protection, and finally got some protection in. And so, and then I went on, and then when my friend Michael came up, and he got to the top, he had that great grin, and, and he said, I can't believe that we just came over that. And I said, well, think about me, I was <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I came across this, and I thought that this really portrayed kind of what I'm talking about here, is that you know, we, we always have all these thoughts that are racing through our mind, um, and the, our pets, you know, they're there in, in the moment. They're, they're doing what we should do now and then, at least. And, um, and that's what I've based all of my art and my creativity on, is trying to be in that kind of a, um, a state. Uh, this is uh, the Lost Teen River. It's from the bridge. Um, I've gone, gone there many times. And... Uh, this particular time that I was there, it just, it was really great. Um, the, the shadows and the light, um, all the new growth coming out. So when I photographed it in black and white, that turned out white. So um, um, it was a low setting, so the water was nice and soft. And uh, I haven't seen it look like that again. That's one thing about um, going out and photographing or painting. Um, or gathering information for um, a sculpture piece, whatever you're doing, is that you know it might not be that way the next time you come, or the next 10 years that you come there. This is by the, um, the uh, Grange, uh, the bridge that goes over the hur hurricane, and um, I've driven by that I don't know how many times, and I always stop on the bridge, hopefully nobody's coming up be behind, and 
know, look, look it over. Well, this particular morning, um, I thought, oh, this looks really great. So I got the shot, and I haven't seen it looking like that since. What was that? Oh, I said half the time it's dry now. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is up Hurricane Creek, up to Falls Creek. Um, I think it was in October, so we had some fall colors. Um, and I was down in the stream, I was over on the side here. Finally, I decided I need to get a little higher. So I climbed up the bank, which was very you know, um, soft and no good footholds. And I had my tripod and you know, working my way up there until I got up there and, and I really liked the way it looked. And uh, now it's changed there too. <laughs> Then out on the, um, the zoom wall um, in the spring, or you're going to be out in these areas here. We already have flowers coming up from what I hear. Um, I make a point not to just be at eye level and taking pictures. I want to see it different ways. Um, so I get down on the ground, up a little, hold, sometimes hold the camera up, and then take a look at it. Now, digital, you can do that. <laughs> With film, you couldn't. Um, I also carry a magnifying glass. And that's part of it is, you know, I like to look at things up close and re really be there. Um, I also have, if anyone will listen to this later, um, a parabolic disc, uh, we'll uncover it, um, and I can listen to the sounds. It really puts me there in the place. And so, oops. So this, the, the flocks, pink flocks in the foreground, it's about three inches from the camera lens. And so I'm real, I'm right down on the ground with it. And I spent lots of time just walking around up there, making sure I don't trample things, you know, and, um, and looking and looking and looking. Sometimes I show up at a place and I just spend a lot of time looking before I even get my camera out. Uh, to me, that's really important. But in this, as I was, Roaming around out there, I came across him. So I took a quick shot <laughs> and backed away. Yeah. You know, that's always something to think about is um, what your presence is doing. Then also out on the zoom wall, I like to go out there in the winter. And the lighting is really incredible, especially for black and white images. Um, and this particular day was stormy. And so the clouds were going through, and the sunlight, it was the uh, middle of the day, I think it was one, about 1 o'clock or so. So the sun's coming down, straight down through the clouds, and so it made all the, the beams. This is up at the Walla Lake, um, early in the morning. I got there, and it was all foggy, cloudy, and I, I sat for a long time. Um, could hear the geese every now and then flying through, and this particular bunch just flew through, and I went, "Oh, that's it! <laughs> snap, 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 snap!" And, and um, this was the best of uh, about a half a dozen or so shots. I like the way that they kind of spread out through there. This was the East Moraine, which uh, now is protected. Um, Again, I love atmospherics. Um, take away all the clouds and everything, it, it wouldn't be much of an image for me. So, but this was taken up at the turnout when you're going um, on the Naha Highway. Up. There's a big pullout up at the top of the rise. And I parked up there. And I was there for oh, four or five hours just watching as the clouds went through, rains, snow. And um, finally got this shot. So again, it takes, takes quite a bit of time. This, this shot, um, actually, it was three days in the planning. I first went to the, the um, wildlife preserve and um, walked all around. There were all these various ponds. And I crawled through bushes, not thinking about all the bugs that might be hitting on there. <laughs> And, and I found this spot out on the water with the oak tree across. And I thought, now nah, this looks really good. So I came back the following morning, 
and there were some, uh, these are uh, tundra swans, and there were some out on the water, uh, but not that many. And one thing about photographing um, waterfowl is getting to the location before the sun comes up. Because the moment that sun peaks over, they fly. And so that was what I wanted. And so um, the third day, I crawled back through the bushes, set up my tripod, and it's just kind of in the dark doing this, and um, waited. And when the, it was getting light, but as soon as that sun came up, and they started flying, and I, and this is what I ended up with. This, this is the, um, the uh, herony that's um, between Enterprise and Joseph. It's on private property. And um, th it's the only one now remaining. There was one in Lostine and Mwalawa, and um, both of those are gone. Um, I was there, this one, in um, 20, and I counted five nests. And when I was there photographing, I photographed for th three years, um, for three months, um, each of those years. And um, I'd get there, I had a, a blind up on top of some scaffolding that I had erected there. And I'd get there before the light come up, climb up there and get all set up. And I'd be there until about, so from about five in the morning until about uh, nine o'clock. And then the lighting would change and it wouldn't be very good. Um, and I watched them um, for hours and hours. And, and this, this is uh, a ritual that they would do often. Um, the male is the one with the stick, and he sat on the nest during the night uh, while she was out on the town. And then when she'd come in in the morning, he would then, they'd greet. They, so they, they stand up, and they, they actually hug each other when, when uh, the mate arrives. And then um, he um, stayed around for a little while, and then flew off, and about 10, 15 minutes later, he came back with this gift. And so, uh, um, and I have a series of him handing the stick off to her, and then she would put it in the nest, and take it out, and put it in the nest, and take it out, and finally found a place that would, was perfect, which was usually in my line of sight. <laughs> and so, it'd be maybe a week or two before the stick would be moved again, and I'd have a clean shot. So, so it's a gift of construction materials. What's that? A gift of construction That's right. materials. Yeah. Like giving a two by four to your loved one. <laughs> yeah, a toaster. My husband would approve. So when you change the way you look at things, the things that you look at change. Can you go back to the, What's that? the two birds? Yeah. That's a photograph? That's a photograph. Yeah, is that's that, one of the things that I like about is this one. Enhanced technique or no, something? No, it's um. It's just the lighting and the. Yeah, the color and the softness of it, it looks painterly, and I really yeah. like that. Yeah. Oh, by the way, the, um, so of all that time, I don't know how many thousands of hours I was there, um, and I took oh, well over twenty five hundred pictures. Sixty of them are pictures that I've used in various ways. This is the only one that really strikes me personally, and other people have enjoyed it. Um, so for all those hours <laughs> and the time and expense, and I have one image. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but you know that that's uh, um, for me. It's the process. It's being out there. It's. Um, being with nature and observing it, that really matters. Recently, I, I heard about a woman photographer, let's see, her name was Vivian Mayer, I think it was. And they dis, they, her, her photographs were discovered. Um, they were never developed. So she took like oh, thousands, tens of thousands of photographs that she never saw. And I thought about that, I said, whoa, how could you do that and never see the work? And it is because, you know, 
It was the process. It was taking the images. It was seeing what she was seeing. And her images are not just snapshots. These are really good photographs. Um, it's, that's, you know, it's pretty amazing that somebody loved the process so much, but she never saw her own images. She's brilliant at, uh, at the compositions, too, which is surprising as she, as she got better. Yeah. But it was just how she knew how to frame the picture as she was taking it. Right, and yeah, and she, but she never saw the, the finished work. That's yeah. so extraordinary. There's a documentary about it. Oh, really? And I have it at the Giuseppe Center. Oh, that so would be great. If anybody wants the DVD to borrow, um, it's fascinating. It was basically, they discovered them through a uh, storage shed sale. And Go. someone bought all of the pictures. Oh. And then there was kind of a lawsuit because she never had any family. But um, yeah, so that, that documentary. So I was going to ask a question. Was, were there any eggs or baby birds in oh, the nest? Or was this yes. just? They, let's see. The they, had, they had four. Yeah. Oh, I see. Oh, okay. yeah, 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 that. <laughs> right here. Yeah. So when they don't have the babies, do they still do this routine? Then they'll they'll um, roost out. If they stay in the rook in the harony, but they, uh -huh. um, yeah, they don't they won't have a nest. Okay. The male com comes and builds a nest and tries to attract the female in. Okay. Um, they're monogamous for the season. Oh, I see. <laughs> Just for the season. Just for the season. That's one way to <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this, this group had um, had four, and they raised them, and I watched them fledge, um, and saw I saw the first flight, and oh. yeah, it was, it was great. Oh, wow. they, they would take off and they they fly around and then come back, and fly around and come back. Yeah. The first one to leave the nest, they, you, know, you can see them up there. They they're exercising, getting all ready to go, and then they, they take off. <laughs> For sale? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Giuseppe Center, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. So, you know, I, I, um, when I came across this quote and I thought, yeah, yeah I really see that in, in work that I'm doing because I come across images that um, they, the, what, what, they out, what the object actually is changes. Um, like this shot here, um, when, I, when I look at things, um, I look at all the patterns that I see out there and I look at from different directions on the ground, I also sometimes look upside down. So this is how the scene actually was. But I saw it as clouds in the sky with the mountains. So it's, a, you know, it gets, for me, it gets me thinking about how do I see this in a different way? And I think that's important when everybody goes out. You know, they're, they're working, if you're painting on, on location or if you're taking photographs and you're working from that, it, you know, looking at it in different ways, um, not just at your eye level. And so this is also a reflection. Which way is up? Pardon? <laughs> Which way is up? Uh, okay, that's that's the ref that's turned upside down. Okay. Okay, so this is this is the actual scene. Okay. Yeah. But I saw this circular motion, and I'm not sure. I guess it's just the way the, the lighting carries through there. But when it's upside down, it really accentuates it. Strange waterfalls. <laughs> so that's the actual way it was. And it's almost like the water's kind of running underneath and dripping off. Yeah. So the other thing is, is sometimes I, after I take a picture and I go home and I look through them and I, I pick out some that I like. Um, then I see things in it that, I, oh, I didn't know that was there. See a little bird down there? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a clump of ice. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a bird. Oh. 
So, um, you know, I, it's like um, I love the discovery that happens either on location or even back in the studio. And this is the lava, and I don't know if I can ever remember how to pronounce it. Pow, pow. Who said that? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Um, and, and I love, love that I, at the time I thought, oh, it's like hair. Mm. It also has a face down in the bottom there. <laughs> and these look like palm leaves or ferns or something. But what it actually is is ice on the windshield of my car. Yeah. Early in the morning when the sun just came up and it's shining in, illuminating clothing that was in the car. Oh. And so the ice made all these patterns on the window. It's not what you look at that matters, it's what you see. I'd like to include you know, people or wildlife in the images that are landscapes that show their environment. And, and it also gives you kind of some kind of scale. So this is, this is a um, American Dipper, and they have a wingspan of about nine inches. So then you can kind of figure out how large it is. This is in the Lostine River, also from the bridge. <laughs> and it was at high water. It was amazing watching them. It was just a little thing, and it would into the water. If we went in there, we'd be washed down the stream. But they pop right back out and go back in again, pop back out. That's a um, wandering albatross. They have a wingspan of 11 feet, 11 and a half. And so you get some kind of scale on what that iceberg is. You also see there's a person way down there in the yeah. bottom. Yeah. So you know, without that person in there, it would look like it could be something that's only this big. Yeah. yeah. And if you look very closely, yep. there's a couple there. You can't, on this screen, you can't see it. In the print, it shows up pretty well. And I, I thought, you know, I loved all the layering. Out of, this is out of the Oregon coast, um, and I, I love the layers and all the mist. But those people down there, they give it more meaning. Also, is that your casita head? Is that your casita head? Um, Otter, uh, Otter, oh, okay. Otter Loop. Yeah. The capacity for delight is the gift of paying attention. I think this is you know, so poignant when you're out there in nature. It's not just you know, walking about, but really feeling it, really being there, and, and knowing that you're a part of this incredible scene. So this is off of um, Eggleston Road. There's a bald eagle nest still there, and they're still um, uh, occupying it. Um, eagles mate for life, and so they, they um, don't have to go through their mating ritual every year. They have their mate, they, but um, he usually settles in and brings the material into the nest, um, and she ar arranges everything. <laughs> 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 but um, it, was, it was really great to watch them. For I, um, I did this two um, spring two seasons in a row. Um, and I, I guess I went to observe them maybe a couple of times a week over two months. And, and um, they have this pattern that they do. Um, one stays at the nest until the, they're old enough that both will go off and hunt, and they need to do that because they're eating so much. But um, in the beginning, one goes off and then comes back, and, it, and then the other one goes off and hunts and comes back, and they just switch off. Uh, th this nest, they came in and, and three different approaches. One was behind me, and then I had two others that I could watch for. And so um, I would sit there, I used my car as a blind, um, and, and just watched them and, and uh, took pictures from time to time. 
But mainly I was just enjoying seeing how they took care of the chicks. And so I would watch and then I'd see that this is the male and he's coming back and you see that he's got something in his talons. Happens to be a gopher. <laughs> and you can see a chick down there. Let's see, they had, I think they had three on this one. So your first image, it looked like it was coming straight at you, and I was wondering how that all worked out for you. I was using a thousand millimeter oh, lens. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so they, the nest was about 150 feet away, maybe. And so um, he was 200, maybe more, 250 feet, maybe. Um, but then I also like, cropped it. Yeah. It is an osprey nest. And again, I sat, I sat and I watched them for a while, and I knew which way that they would always come in. Um, and sometimes it was one at a time, and sometimes, like now, you can't see the chicks. They're hiding down in there. And the fe this is a female approaching the nest. And then the male arrives. Fish. Yeah. Fish. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's their main diet. Now, I was on a photo shoot for Nature Conservancy down at the Williamson Preserve, and uh, I was just wrapping things up and uh, heading back to the car. So I'm walking along, and I happened to turn around and look up at these posts. They were pretty high above the ground, and I saw this bald eagle up there. And I went, oh, that's, I could make something funny out of that. <laughs> And so oh, I lined them up with the post. You know. <laughs> but while I was looking through my camera at him, um, he decided to fly. Mm. Now I was a ways off. I had a um, uh, 400 millimeter, I think, on that. So I was, I was not underneath the post. Yeah. Um, so he flew. And like I said, you never know what's going to happen. So I followed him and got that shot. <laughs> So again, you know, it's always important to look behind you. So if you're out and you see this scene, you go, oh, this is really great. Maybe you should turn around and look behind you because you <laughs> don't know what you're missing. <laughs> so then to, to wrap up, I'd just like to remind everybody, when you're walking through the fields, you know, watch where you're stepping because you never know what's going to be under your foot. <laughs> the songbirds are nesting out there at this time of year, and so it's important to be careful. Also the rattlesnakes. Yeah, the rattlesnakes. Yeah. 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 I, always, I always have my tripod in front of me. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you.